Welcome to Rambam in Depth. Today we're going to be discussing the Rambam in Hilchas Psuloi HaMikdashin, Perak Yud Gimel, Halacha Aleph. But the Rambam says the following, Shalosh Machshabes Hain, Shapeslanes HaKabonis. There are three kinds of thoughts, improper thoughts, that will invalidate a sacrifice. And he goes on to detail them. There's one where you have in mind that the sacrifice that you're offering is not the one that it's supposed to be. Another thought, an improper thought, is where you think that you're going to eat the sacrifice or do things with the sacrifice not in their proper place. That's called chutz l'mekaymai. And then there's also the machshav abzman, called pigul, that a person slaughters a carbon, and he has in mind that he's going to sprinkle the blood after sunset, when you're not allowed to sprinkle the blood, it's too late. So while you were bringing the carbon and you're slaughtering it, you had in mind to do something improper with the zrika, with the sprinkling. These are three examples of improper thoughts. Now, when you talk about the word thought, literally the word thought means something that is in your mind, but you didn't vocalize it, you didn't express it verbally. So the Rambam seems to hold, because he doesn't mention anything about that there's a need for the person to actually say these words, I am slaughtering this carbon with this and this intention. No, just thought alone is enough to make it puzzle, to invalidate it. That's how the Mishnah Lamelech, one of the commentaries of the Rambam, infers from the Rambam. However, Rashi and Tosfos disagree. They make it very clear in several places that when the Gemara talks about this type of thought that's invalidating thought, it doesn't mean thought. It means dibur. It means speech. Then why does it use the word thought? Because it means not action. You don't have to do an act to violate this law. It only involves an inactive part of your physical uh, being. That means you do it with speech as opposed to action. But the Rambam, according to the Mishnah Melech, seems to hold that thought alone is enough. Likewise, the Chinuch also says that the thought is what makes it invalid. The Shittu Mukabetzes, the commentary of Rishainim on Mesech de Bav brings a proof to the Rambam. He brings the Gemara in Zvachim, the Gemara there says when a person has an improper thought, he will incur the penalty of Malchus, of lashes. However, the Gemara qualifies that. That's only according to the opinion that says that a negative transgression even if it doesn't involve action, physical action, is still culpable and eligible for malchus, for lashes. But according to the opinion that says, a lab she'en by maisa, a negative commandment that has no action, there is no malchus, there is no lashes, so a person who's violating this law of improper thought would not get any lashes because there's no action over there. So the question is, if the improper thought involves dibur, the way Rashi and Tosvus maintain, then dibur is action, akima svasav, moving your lips. We find the Gemara talks about the prohibition of tamura. You're not allowed to exchange the holiness of one animal for another. And if you do that, both animals remain holy. And it's a negative commandment. And the Gemara says that if a person ha- does that type of tamura, exchanging, the person is eligible for lashes. Why? Because it came through speech, all it was is speech, but the speech actually converted the animal from a chulin, from non-holy, to something holy. So here also, if it requires dibur, if it requires speech, and through speech you invalidated the sacrifice, that would mean that you would be eligible for malchus. So the fact that the Gemara says that there is no, there are no malchus, because it's a lab she'en be'maisa, proves that Machshava means literally machshava, thought, and not speech. The Naida Behuda, however, says no, that's not a proof. That you can't compare this machshava over here of Pigul to Tmura, because in Tmura you actually ch- made a change. You took an animal that was chulin, that was not holy, and you made it holy through your speech. So the speech was effective in transforming something into something else. But in the case of Pigul, the animal was forbidden even before. Once you make an animal holy, you're not allowed to use the animal for anything. So you didn't actually change anything. The status of the animal is that it's prohibited, which I don't understand fully 
but it changes the nature of the prohibition. Whereas an animal that's sanctified is holy, you're not allowed to use, use it and benefit from it. It's, a, it's the love of me'ilah, of improper uh, appropriation of something that is holy. But now it's pigle, you invalidated a sacrifice. So I'm not sure what the Nadi Bihuda means, but the Shittim Kubetzis proof seems to stand. But then there's another question that the Rambam's opinion is problematic, as asked by the Sefer Tavu Asher and Chasdei David, a commentary on the Tisefta. And they say like this, the Rambam rules, as we just said from the Gemara, that if you do have these improper thoughts, there are no, is no Malchus. Why? Because Machshava is not Maisa. You didn't do an act. You, you just thought you didn't do the act. And we hold, like the opinion, that lab she'en be ma'isa ein leken olav, a negative commandment that has no action, there are no lashes. However, if we say that the Rambam's opinion is, in fact, that machshava is enough to invalidate just mere thought, then there's a simpler reason why there's no lashes. How are you going to give lashes? How are you going to warn the person? How do you know what the person thought? How do you know that the person thought that the animal should be pigle? How could you give a person lashes for something that you don't even know that the person violated? So that's the argument against the Rambam's opinion that says thought is enough, or at least that's how the Mishnah Melech understands the Rambam, that thought is enough. So the Prima Godim seems to answer this question by saying that, no, you could give a person malchus for a, a prohibition of thought. For example, the person before he slaughters the sacrifice says, I am going to slaughter this sacrifice with the intention of sprinkling the blood after the shkia, after the sunset. So we know what the person's thoughts are, and therefore, if not for the fact that there's no action involved, the person would be guilty, he could be warned, he'd be guilty of the crime because he was warned beforehand. That's the prima godim's rather answer to the question. But then there's another question. If we're talking about a case where the person actually said they're going to slaughter the animal with the intention of sprinkling the blood after the sunset. If that's if that's the case, then why does the Rambam say Ein Machshava Maisa that thought is not action? Here's more than thought. There's the speech over here. But I don't think that's such a strong question in that in and of itself because yes, it's true that there's speech over here, but the speech is not the prohibition. There's nothing wrong about the speech. It's the thought and the thought the person continues to have while they're slaughtering the sacrifice. The person says it before he slaughters, I'm going to slaughter this sacrifice with the intention to sprinkle the blood after the sunset. So when the person shechs the animal, we already know what his thought is, and the thought continues to be there while he's slaughtering the animal, because he said, I'm slaughtering with that intention. So we're talking about machshava, we're talking about it's the thought that the person is being charged with, that he had the improper thought. We only know about the thought because of his speech beforehand, but that's not what he's getting punished for. He's getting punished for the machshava. And therefore the Rambam says, even though the machshava is a crime, because and we know that he had that thought, but it's not mice, it's not an action. And therefore there's not going to be any malchus.